Half a day, everyone. Welcome and thank you for being here today for this uh, public hearing. We will now call the Committee on Health, Tourism, Historic Preservation, Land and Justice to order. Today's Thursday, May 21, May uh, 2020, and the time is about uh, 1.06 p.m. Notices for this confirmation hearing were disseminated via email to all senators and all main media broadcasting outlets on May 14th and Tuesday, May 19th, 2020. The notice was also published in the Guam Daily Post on May 14th and Tuesday, May 19th, 2020. The agenda items for today are the confirmation of the appointment of Dr. Anita B. Enriquez as a member of the Guam Land Use Commission for a five-year term and the reappointment of Louisa M. Westling as a member of the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission for a four-year term. I'd like to acknowledge uh, the presence of my colleagues, uh, beginning with the uh, Legislative Secretary, Senator Amanda Shelton, Senator Regine Bisco Lee, Thank, uh, I'm sorry, the Vice Speaker, uh, my apologies, uh, Senator Talina Nelson, Senator Will Castro. Thank you colleagues for being here. I'd also like to thank the appointees who are here and, and those who have come to testify on their behalf. So we will begin with the appointment of Dr. Anita B. Enriquez as a member of the Guam Land Use Commission. Uh, the Guam Land Use Commission is composed of five members and uh, the quorum is, uh, sorry, uh, I, I think their quorum is three. And um, the, the purpose of this centralized planning land use commission is to ensure that the people of Guam are not subjected to unbridled and unmanageable growth that would threaten the benefits, comforts, and privileges to which each Guam resident is entitled. The Guam Land Use Commission uh, receives reports from the eight, uh, Agency Review Committee, which is composed of different agencies that give their recommendations as to the, the proposed either rezoning or variance to the zoning laws. And then, but it's the commission that actually makes the decision despite what whatever might be in that report. And sometimes the commissions, they also hear from, of course, the public and the municipal planning councils of, of the different villages. So we first have signed up to testify on behalf of Dr. Enriquez. Uh, is Sunny Ada here? All right, I don't see him. So uh, we'll move to the director, uh, Melanie Mendiola. You may begin. Thank you. Um, half a day, it's great to see everyone again. Um, uh, again, my name is Melanie uh, Mendiola, for the record, and I'm the administrator and CEO at the Guam Economic Development Authority. I'm here uh, in my personal capacity to provide testimony for my professor, uh, my colleague, and my friend, Dr. Anita Borja Enriquez, for her nomination to the Guam Land Use Commission. Um, Dr. Borja Enriquez was the first representative of the University of Guam with whom I had the pleasure of interacting um, upon my uh, return home from college and at, uh, and in my involvement at the Guam Chamber of Commerce's Young, Guam Young Professional Subcommittee. Dr. Enriquez and her husband, Noel, were always very supportive of our fledgling group, uh, providing guidance and, and mentorship to us. Um, I subsequently um, joined the Professional Masters in Business Administration, the PMBA cohort in 2011, uh, graduated in 2012. Um, and Dr. Enriquez was a constant presence in this program, which I later found out uh, was a program that she played a, a pretty pivotal uh, role in establishing. Uh, Dr. Enriquez advocated for the scholar practitioner approach towards problem solving and, and uh, she'd always say, this is what the research and the data say, now how can we make it relevant for our community? And I believe that this approach will, um, will be of great use to the Guam uh, Land Use Commission. During my time at the University of Guam um, Endowment Foundation, she was extremely supportive of our efforts to fundraise for the University of Guam. Uh, she impressed upon her deans and the team at the endowment the importance of cooperation and, and her bridge building 
really helped us uh, get a campaign off the ground. Um, this is our campaign for scholarships called the G is for Giving campaign. And um, this uh, continues to break records after three years um, since its launch. I was very, I was very happy uh, last year to have co-taught the last cohort that came through uh, the PMBA program. Um, and I'm, and I hope to be a professor someday at the University of Guam because I mean, who wouldn't want to be just like Dr. Enriquez, you know? Um, so the, this is just a, a snapshot of my experiences with Dr. Enriquez. I hope that I was able to convey how much of an in, impact she's had on on me personally and professionally. Um, and uh, the kind of impact she's had on the on Chamorro, especially Chamorro women leaders, um, current leaders and future leaders on the island. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Director Mignola. Uh, we will now hear from Sunny Ada. You may begin. Please state your name for the record. Hi. Good afternoon. Half a day, everyone. Um, Sunny Ada. Um, I'm here to, um, to uh, testify in favor of um, Dr. Enriquez to the Guam Land Use Commission uh, Board. And really, I, I just have to say, I went, ever since um, uh, I was back at the University of Guam Board of Regents from 2004 to 2012, I've, I've come to know uh, Dr. Enriquez, and I've always known her to be very professional, certainly educated, but uh, most important was she was engaged. She was always uh, she was always there. She was always present. And even subsequent to that, um, um, my time at the university, um, I've just seen her in the community in in multiple, uh, not just social events, but meetings, and again representing the university, which she does very well. And so, you know, taking the three, uh, the three uh, attributes that I mentioned, uh, being uh, educated, professional, and engaged, um, those are qualities that, uh, that I think any board uh, serving the community um, um, should have. And she's ready, willing, and able to do so. So, I mean, put all that together, and uh, I think it's a slam dunk. So. I'm totally in favor, and I, I hope that this uh, committee uh, uh, does see that uh, she is worthy to uh, throw her hat into the public service uh, in, in the position as a board member for the uh, Guam Land Use Commission. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ada. We will now hear from Ms. Holly Rustic, President of the Guam Women's Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much, uh, Senator Shri Shalahi. Um, it's a pleasure being here and it's a pleasure um, reading. I actually have a letter on behalf of the Guam Women's Chamber. Um, so I'd like to go ahead and read that to you now. Uh, the Guam Women's Chamber of Commerce proudly supports the nomination of Dr. Anita Borja Enriquez as a member of the Guam Land Use Commission. Dr. Enriquez as a, is uniquely qualified to sit on the board of the GLUC, a decision-making body empowered to grant subdivisions, approvals, zone changes, conditional uses and variances from land use laws and regulations, as well as seashore reserve and wetland permits. Dr. Enriquez currently serves as Senior Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs for the University of Guam, a land grant institution. Throughout her 25 years at UOG, she has used her various positions to promote not only outstanding student development, as you've heard from my other um, members on this call, but of also the economic development of our island. During her tenure as UOG's Dean of the School of Business and Public Administration, she secured over $1 million in technical assistance grants from the U.S. Department of Commerce, Economic Development, and Administration to establish the UOG Pacific Center for Economic Initiatives. So we're really excited to have that. And as I continue here, <laughs> um, she has also secured federal grants from the Defense Logistics Agency to establish the Guam Procurement Technical Assistance Center, P PTAC, from the US Small Business Development Administration to establish the new Guam Veterans Business Outreach Center and from the Department of the Interior Office of Insular Affairs to launch the Buy Local Guam Marketing Educational Campaign, which has been phenomenal. These programs have helped to bring in millions of dollars for Guam businesses, promoted local wisdom and knowledge and products. For her outstanding efforts, Dr. Enriquez was honored with the US Small Business Administration 2013 Woman in Business Champion of the Year Award. Having established her first business at the age of 19, 
Dr. Enriquez is an expert with regard to the challenges of business development, including land use issues that often accompany that development. She is also a very strong proponent of the sustainability of our beautiful tropical island, having been instrumental in UOG's recent launch of the Guam Green Growth, the G3 initiative, to develop solutions to sustainability challenges and contribute to a green economy for the island region. Dr. Enrique's astute business acumen combined with her sustainability efforts and her passion to see Guam succeed on all levels make her the perfect person to balance the development of our lands with environmentally friendly business practices. The GLUC board would most certainly benefit from her skills, her wisdom, and her professionalism. Of course, Dr. Enriquez is also a founding member of the Guam Women's Chamber of Commerce, whose mission is to advance women in business through advocacy, networking, mentorship, and access to resources. As the above mentioned examples have proven, Dr. Enriquez embodies this mission in her work and in her life. Her community involvement is wide ranging. In addition to having established the, G the Guam Women's Chamber of Commerce, she also serves on the Vice President of Guampedia Foundation. Um, the, uh, she's also a Director for Foundation of the, for the Rotary Club of Tumon Bay on the Pacific Island Small Business Development Center Advisory Board, as well as serving on several other advisory boards. The Guam Women's Chamber of Commerce cannot envision a person more qualified or suited to sit on the GLUC board. Therefore, we wholeheartedly and strongly recommend her confirmation for this body. And on a more personal note, I have known Dr. Enriquez for a number of years and have intimately witnessed her passion and her leadership. We have worked together on an array of community initiatives ranging from IRB approved nonprofit research, as well as the nitty gritty of writing grants behind the scenes to help fund and programs that benefit the island of Guam. I have also witnessed her advocacy and active support for the community from her attending launches of the literary arts magazine of Storyboard, Makerspace Guam events, the Center for, the Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation, um, as well as being an active member um, in serving on Guam Women's Chamber of Commerce events. So um, what I can, what I can hope you hear that I say is she doesn't just um, say something, right? She shows up and she does it. She's absolutely amazing. And I confidently say she's one of the most compassionate and eloquent leaders that I know. To add depth to the gratitude and appreciation that I personally have for Dr. Enriquez, she is also an invaluable mentor for women like myself who strive to learn from her experience, her integrity, her expertise, and her graceful demeanor. Therefore, I'm honored to deliver both a professional and a personal recommendation for this outstanding woman, Dr. Anita Borja Enriquez. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Rustic. We're now here, uh, well, I'd like to recognize the president of uh, the presence of Senator Telotai Tugui. Thank you for joining us. And we will now hear from Mr. David Taidinko. Hey, uh, Madam Chairperson and members of the committee, uh, thank you for this opportunity to testify in support of Dr. Anita Enriquez. Um, I uh, am testifying as a private citizen. Uh, we, uh, my wife and I, uh, kind of own and operate the Valley of the Laddy. I serve as CEO and she serves as commander in chief and whatever she says I do. Uh, I've known Dr. Anita for close to 20 years and one of the first engagements I've had with her was when we talked about building our National Museum as it stands today back in the early 2000s. Dr. Anita was not just a great team player but a truly committed and a leader in the project. Her dedication and perseverance as part of the team ultimately led to the funding and the construction of what we know now as the Antonio uh, Palomo Guam National Museum. Her resume will clearly show how she cares about our island and our people with the various organizations and initiatives she has been or is currently involved in. She is a person who I know will serve with great integrity and can be counted on to make fair and unbiased decisions as a member of the Guam Land Use Commission as it will affect our people, our island, and our economy. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to add was she is so accessible and responsive. Um, I called her a, a, about a month ago and said, we as small businesses need the help and resources of the university to try to get us through this COVID-19 uh, pandemic and the impact uh, it is having in all our little businesses. And she was 
right there for us. Uh, she stood up resources at the university. We have an ongoing program now that we hope to launch with the university to train our people about uh, safe practices, uh, develop programs that will just help Guam recover a lot faster. And it's because of her leadership at the university that we were able to stand this up really quickly. So I want to personally thank her for that. Uh, as a member of the Guam Land Use Commission, I know the tough decisions to balance economic development with what is good and right for our people. And I just know she will always, always make the right decision when it comes to our people. I hope you will consider this testimony for her confirmation. I will gladly uh, be, uh, answer any questions if you have of me uh, on Dr. Nita's appointment. Thank you so much. Jesus Masi. Agumas, Mr. Taidinko, and um, I want to also welcome to our Zoom hearing uh, Senator Kelly Marsh Taitino. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and now we have uh, Dr. Christ, President of the University of Guam. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, all senators. And um, I'm very pleased to provide uh, oral testimony in favor of Dr. Anita Borja Enriquez's uh, appointment to the Land Use Commission. I think uh, her uh, commitment to economic development, her experience in that, and the way that she's connected the preparation of future uh, business leaders and even current business leaders through the School of Business and Public Administration to um, to actual businesses, to actual innovation um, is, is really a great, um, will be a great asset to the Land Use Commission. Um, and I think, uh, you know, years of experience as a business professor, as dean of the School of Business and Public Administration, and now as provost and senior vice president of the university, where she's, of course, the chief academic officer and the chief student, student affairs officer for the university. All of that will provide terrific connections, I think, for uh, for the board. I think uh, the, the ex experience and expertise will be um, just what the board needs, and uh, I can't um, recommend her more highly. So I urge you to confirm her. Thank you, Senator. Thank you very much, Dr. Christ. Thank you for being here with us. And uh, we will now hear from Dr. Enriquez. Buenas Jinhapade, Honorable Senator Therese Terlahi, and members of the Committee on Health, Tourism, Historic Preservation, Land, and Justice, and Honorable Senators. Uh, Sijus Masi for this opportunity to provide my testimony based on my appointment to serve on the Guam Land Use Commission. I'm very grateful for uh, the confidence Governor Lou Leon Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio have expressed through this appointment. I'm very humbled and quite mamalo and greatly appreciative of the uh, overwhelming support of uh, those who have provided oral testimony on behalf of my appointment. I am aware, I am aware that the GLUC is a decision-making body empowered to grant subdivision approvals, zone changes, conditional uses, and variances from land use laws and regulations, as well as seashore reserve and wetland permits and the overarching benefits to our communities and the island's economy. And this comes with heavy responsibility, responsibility and the need to exercise extreme care and review and balance thought in how decisions are made, are made. Integrity and transparency are paramount. My passion and commitment to our island is in, enduring and has been the compass that has guided me throughout my life. This includes extensive experience with several community development projects and organizations that enable me to appreciate the particular challenges and long-term planning goals that will be presented to the GLUC. The experiences I have had on government and nonprofit boards, coupled with holding key administrative positions at the University of Guam and collaborative work with the private sector government and nonprofit organizations have provided me with a deeper appreciation for addressing multiple stakeholder interests, fiscal, environmental, and compliance considerations, and ensuring the best possible outcome in strategic planning and decision-making. My engagement with the Haganya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority and the significance towards revitalizing our historic downtown capital as a founding, I'm sorry, 
working with various stakeholders to plan and build our new Guam National Museum as a founding member of the Guam Museum Foundation Board and a member of the Guam Department of Chamorro Affairs Board of Trustees, an understanding and respect for our cultural barriers through collaboration with the Guam Preservation Trust as part of the revitalization of downtown Hagatna's small business development initiative, the One Village, One Product Initiative and Guam Green Growth Initiative in alignment with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, just to name a few, give me an expansive frame to draw from in my role as a prospective member of the GLUC. In closing, with the confidence of your committee, with the confidence of our honorable senators and our people, I will commit towards providing a strategic and insightful approach towards responsible, sustainable and balanced development that respects our natural environment, our heritage and our community at large. I am always mindful of the importance of building our human cap capacity and assets to improve the overall quality of life for our island and its people socially and economically. I intend to leverage the values of integrity, respect to, and enough at Malik as they support the responsible development of our island's land, coastal shorelines, and natural environment ecosystem within the purview of the GLUC's review and compliance. It will be an honor and a privilege to serve in this new capacity. Sidzuz Maasi, Anita Boran, your Enriquez. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Enriquez. Um, appreciate your testimony and your willingness to serve on this commission. It has a, a very big role, in it, as you said, in the development of Guam, in our prosperity, and also in our quality of life. So thank you for recognizing that. I wanted to also put on the record that we have received testimony in support of your nomination from Siska Hutapea, president of Cornerstone Valuation Guam, from Mr. Joe Kanata, the chief program officer at the Guam Preservation Trust, from Rita Pangilin and Nauta from Guampedia, from Denise R. Selk uh, of Coco Joe's, and from Doyen Marato, Operations Manager of Silver Mountain Construction. And uh, I guess if I could just ask, start off with the questioning, uh, I'd like to ask uh, the biggest, I think, um, issue with this commission is the pressure that it faces. There's huge pressure, a huge stake. As you know, you know, developments are uh, very costly. They're investments for for our businesses and our our families. And uh, so, a no from the commission is uh, it's a very hard thing to do. And uh, we've seen it uh, that the the communities have actually you know risen up in protest of decisions by this commission. And so we want you to weigh everything fairly, of course, but I just want to know if you think uh, there's also a new push for speed, right? They want these things to be done fast. Sometimes they try to push it through the legislature so that they will be faster, but it really you know, requires deliberation and consideration of every agency's input because those are agencies charged with protection of seashores, protection of water, our water sources, and all those that are crucial to our lives. And so I guess I want to just uh, hear from you on that, on the pressures that uh, if you if you can anticipate that and how do you think you might handle that? And I'm sure you know everyone who might be applying and you know how you would handle what, uh, you know, it's going to be your friends who are coming to you at that point. Sidious uh, Masi, Madam Chair, uh, I was listening to the three plus hours uh, hearing uh, by, or meeting rather, by, by the GLUC back in March of this year. Um, and of course, those links are posted on the, uh, the Office of Public Auditors uh, uh, page. And, and certainly, uh, there's always a desire to, uh, uh, to, uh, to take advantage of opportunities that are going to uh, so, you know, grow, grow different businesses, different developers' uh, portfolios. And the one thing that I'm always reminded uh, essentially is uh, the need to have a balanced approach at uh, development and, and, and is there an overarching plan and have all the stakeholders uh, who have interest in this particular development 
even even if, if, if these uh, interests are not direct, but they will be impact, impacted somehow, whether it be directly or indirectly, have they have, have they been consulted somehow? And it, it goes to, uh, I don't know if it's part, partly uh, training that I, I've had uh, over the years in dealing with uh, different uh, governance uh, bodies at, at the University of Guam. We have a faculty union, we have a faculty senate, we have an administrative council, we have staff council, we have the Student Government, Government Association. And so uh, uh, recognizing that there's a lot, of, a lot at stake uh, the question that's always posed is, uh, have we consulted with this group? Have we consulted with that group? And in review, obviously, of the uh, uh, Department of Land Management and its website and knowing uh, essentially uh, some of the processes that, that are involved in, in uh, 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 who needs to review what prior to anything actually uh, appearing before the GLUC. And to also hear the the the, uh, the presentations uh, during the uh, GLUC meetings, at least through the recording that I heard, and and it's uh, usually a representative on be on behalf of the investor or on behalf of the developer, and so I often think about over the years how uh, different parts of the island have uh, gone through some sort of development, but there's but there's also this uh, sort of disparate. Uh, uh, condition in terms of we've got those uh, who are very poor and those who are relatively wealthy and wealthy and you have the in between and what are we doing about affordable housing and what are we doing about uh, preserving ancestral lands and and zoning and oh gosh you know I, I want to have this development because it has an amazing view but what about this what about the environment and so forth so having that balanced approach and being and exercising due diligence is going to be critical um, I feel in, in this particular role. And, and of course there are gonna be a lot of pressures, but uh, you know, I, I've seen, I've seen all, all, all types of pressures very similar to this. And of course, uh, you know, it always, it always comes back to what is the responsibility of the person holding that role within any board, within any commission and having served in, in, in multiple boards, recognizing uh, uh, the need for uh, to exercise integrity, the need to exercise purpose, the need to align with mission, the need to protect uh, a much broader uh, comprehensive stakeholders' interests, and and in light of the fact that that we haven't seen much progress in that balanced approach towards development of our lands. Uh, it's high time that we do have a, a more comprehensive and balanced approach at doing so. And so as, as all of these different requests come in, uh, the question is, where do they fit? Or where, where, where do they not fit? And, and what other kinds of investments are being made to ensure that the, the, the infrastructure is, is, is adequate and that, and that uh, uh, neighboring communities or neighboring uh, residents uh, are going to be uh, you know, okay with this? I hope that's, that answered your question. Yes, I appreciate the thoughtfulness of your response, uh, Dr. Enriquez. And I know I have known you for many years, even at the University of Guam. And prior to that, I uh, very early on in my, as a young lawyer, it's I think when we met. And uh, so I wanna thank you for all your work in the community as well. And I hope that that, that uh, helps you in this newest endeavor. I'd like to open it now for uh, questions from the, Senators, it's beginning with the vice speakers, uh, Vice Speaker Nelson. Thank you, Madam Chair. That was actually the primary question that I wanted to ask as well. Um, and I appreciate uh, Dr. Enriquez that you uh, took the time out to listen to the meeting minutes of uh, the board that you are being uh, appointed to. Um, yeah, many people don't do that. They don't do their research of their appointment. And so I, I thank you for that. and. Um, I thank you for answering the call to serve our community. And, um, you know, I, I am really concerned about the protection of our natural resources. We had many protests in the past and, um, you know, even myself, I felt that, um, that they didn't consider the natural resources of our island. And it was almost as if the pressure was on the board or the Guam Land Use, on the Guam Land Use Commission to push uh, development agenda, but not really looking at Guam in a holistic approach and really seeing 
where should we prioritize commercial businesses? Where should we prioritize residential businesses? I mean, we also see it um, with the way that they uh, did the land for the landless or tomorrow land trust, you know, these, these plans weren't really thought out. And so I hope that as we move forward and um, as you, uh, as a, uh, an anticipated member of the commission that you will be able to, you know, help them guide them in this in this way and in, in a very comprehensive approach and in a very meticulous approach on where we are doing our development and how is it impacting our natural resources and also the people of Guam. Thank you very much. And I, um, you know, I'm a great fan of you and uh, I look up to you as a role model. And so uh, I'm happy to to be here and and to uh, support your uh, appointment. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Speaker. We'll now hear from uh, Legislative Secretary, Sen Senator Amanda Shelton. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And I think, you know, Senator Terlahi, uh, her question and uh, Senate Vice Speaker's comments were really what I was thinking as well. But I think your, your background, uh, Dr. Enriquez, in, as an academic, as a, a woman in business, as a, a community advocate, uh, so many uh, different uh, facets of your background will really uh, help make you a, uh, um, a trusted voice on this, this board that uh, will do what's right by the people of Guam. And I uh, especially appreciated what uh, Holly brought up uh, about your work uh, now with the G3 initiative and uh, your, your concern about the environment and your community work in, in that area and at the University of Guam. Uh, I know that uh, you care about our island and what's best for our island in that way. And so uh, though there will be challenges, I'm sure, to make decisions um that that you feel torn torn at you are a strong woman who is able to to make decisions like that and so uh, I know you're also a very busy woman but I have the confidence that you'll be able to take on all of the tasks at hand and continue your work at the university while serving in this position so thank you very much for answering uh the call and I thank the governor and the lieutenant governor for um appointing such a um such a qualified person to this board. Thank you. Thank you very much. Senator Shelton, we'll now hear from our minority minority leader, Senator Taitikwi. To do this, Madam uh, Chair, and um, the, the questioning was excellent uh, for Anita because all you're gonna hear from me is like, I, I love you, Anita. <laughs> you are great. I've known you for so long and Every question that I had, uh, you were always there to give your your point of view, and I definitely respect um, your your um, all the answers you've given me, and they've helped me in the in the past. And now I look to you, hoping that um, you use that uh, well knowledgeable per person that you are, and but most especially the balance that I see in your life, the balance in the environment and the balance in, in the economy, those two together. If there's any other person that would know something more that would, I mean, would, would know more about putting the two together, it is definitely you. Um, I, I see your love for our island and I know that you won't let it go a row to something that's not gonna be sustainable and, um, and better for our people, especially our economy. Let's grow that economy, Anita. You know, one of the biggest issues is having these, these agencies and directors to provide the reports in a timely manner. In fact, I put a bill out recently that would um, put a penalty for directors who do not, within a certain time, provide the information needed for uh, businesses wanting uh, the report for their property, the ARC, for an example. Um, and it, it would find them. I hope you support that because <laughs> You know that time is money, too, when it comes into the economy. But most especially, Anita, you're a beautiful person um, in every aspect of the word, um, a woman that we can all be proud of, as women to say that uh, you, you um, definitely represent us very well. Thank you so much for all you're doing for the island. And thank you. Congratulations. And of course, you have my full support. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Taitagui. We'll now hear from Senator Regine Viscoli. Lee. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I also wanna thank the governor and Lieutenant Governor for this awesome uh, appointment. I wanna thank everyone who has participated in our hearing today for giving us your time um, and lending your support to the nominee. Uh, thank you for the both the live and the written testimony. I know there are a number of people who submitted written testimony as well. Um, and last but not least, certainly thank you to Dr. Enriquez for accepting the nomination. Um, I have the pleasure of knowing Dr. Anita both personally and professionally. And one of the things that gives me great confidence in, in her nomination is knowing that she is a mother and she is a grandmother. And she is really truly invested in what we are gonna leave for future generations to our island. And so that's cer certainly something um, that's very important for me. And I know that um, if confirmed to this board that Dr. Enriquez will, will kind of you know, be our representative and make sure that we're trying to move in that um, direction that's gonna provide the best for future generations. Um, with that, Dr. Anita, I did wanna ask you, you know, we've had a lot of different variances, zone changes, different things that the GLUC um, is responsible for. And it's been a challenge sometimes to kind of balance the concerns between um, environmental concerns and economic development. And you spoke a little bit about that in your, in your opening statement. Um, but I wanted to ask you if you could give the committee an example of either here at home or abroad where they, they really got it right, where you can see a true concern for the environment balanced with um, developing. So if you could give us an example of a project um, either here locally or um, somewhere off island where you think that um, land use was done well. You know, I'm trying to recall, I mean, there, you, you could, probably uh, research a lot of these different examples. Uh, for an urban example, I think it was Santa Barbara with regard to uh, uh, establishing a, a well-planned jurisdiction and, and ensuring that uh, uh, there, there is consistency in development of, of their, their, their housing, their housing sections as well as uh, uh, commercial and so forth. I also think about what goes on in Palau with, re, you know, with regard to the concern of uh, preserving their natural resources, their environment, and what they've done in terms of abolishing uh, plastic bottles and, and the kinds of uh, legislation that has kicked in in order to ensure that that, you know, that is something that the entire, their entire country addresses as a whole and, 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 and how that has also been embedded in their tourism industry. I think about, um, the uh, the banana leaf initiative of of taking what's in the environment and and sort of turning it to this somewhat circular economy and and the initiatives that have already started based on a lot of these promising practices under the uh, direction of uh, Dr. Austin Shelton through the Center for Island Sustainability, which uh, jump started the whole Guam Green and, uh, Growth Initiative, and certainly something that the Executive Administration, uh, together with the, the Guam Legislature, has uh, has joined forces to support. But uh, uh, the you know when when I got involved with the One Village One Product. Uh, initiative, which was uh, something borrowed out of Oita Prefecture in Japan, it was really taking into consideration the natural resources that we have in each of the different villages and how can we uh, turn that into uh, uh, an opportunity for, for uh, residents within each village to help reduce the carbon footprint uh, by providing uh, job opportunities within their respective villages, but to take what is considered waste uh, that's come, that comes from the natural environment and turn it into a, an entrepreneurial opportunity. Uh, we think about uh, what we have with the, the bamboo and the surplus of bamboo and, and, and the, the negative impact it has had on our environment and how do we turn that into an opportunity for uh, a small uh, uh, local production base. Uh, but there are a lot of you know, a lot of different things that come into the equation and a lot of promising practices that we can still look to and certainly other jurisdictions that that we can uh, uh, certainly uh, 
research and ensure that there is that balance. Uh, I think about uh, 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 home, you know, homelessness on island and, and also uh, the, uh, uh, the pretense of, of something that looks like an affordable housing and yet it, it doesn't do anything that's more expansive than that. So when we think about uh, making Guam an attractive place for investment and development, uh, we need to ensure that there is a way to, to, to balance all of that through some kind of updated comprehensive plan. Uh, some, you know, something that has factored in new technologies and new best practices and uh, takes into consideration review of existing uh, 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 legislation, uh, ex existing ordinances that may need to be updated and, and, and uh, rather than be a rubber stamp for anything that comes through the commission, uh, there really needs to be a, a, a total review of what we're doing now. How are we doing it and how could it be better uh, to make more progress uh, uh, for our island? Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Enriquez. I really appreciate your time. I appreciate um, you accepting this nomination and I look forward to supporting your, uh, your nomination once it's brought to the floor. So thank you so much again and thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Senator. We'll now hear from Senator Kelly marsh Titanum. Thank you, Madam Chair, and um, half a day to Dr. Enriquez. So, seduce Masi for accepting the nomination. It's not always easy work, um, as you're, but I know that you're up to the challenge. And going through your packet and, and listening to what's been discussed thus far, you know, we know you've had quite a number of administrative positions and you've had quite a broad range of types of memberships and boards and commissions that have to do with uh, tax review, procurement, uh, women in business, administration, and the like. So you bring a wealth of background with you. And of course, along with the others, I really support and am looking forward to you bringing your mindset and, you, and your framework of developing, but doing so with that big picture in mind, that there has to be balance. And we know that they can coexist, that yes, we are going to develop, but it doesn't have to be only in one way or mean only one thing. So in fact, um, if with that kind of a, a mindset, we may be finding, as you were mentioning with the, the bamboo issues and so forth, that there are actually maybe many more development potentials than we, than we would have thought of without having that mindset there. So I think that will be um, really serving us well. And we've had some discussions about quality of life on Guam uh, being a major concern of yours. And we know that in our community, we have major challenges and too many that are struggling to have a better quality of life. So if there's anything short, and if not, uh, I know time is tight, we can forego it, but is there anything that comes up as an issue that you could provide just as an example of where development and quality of life might come into play, either working together or um, challenging one another. Yeah, so, you know, balancing both social, you know, the social concerns with the economic development concerns. And we can see, you know, just different examples, whether it be downtown Hagatnya with our homeless population and uh, you know, trying to preserve what we have down there and trying to make it a more attractive place. There's still a, a, a huge growing poverty, you know, amount of uh, 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 our residents at the poverty level, and many dependent on federal subsidies. Uh, and uh, so, you know, there is an opportunity to, you know, to leverage a lot of what we have in the form of uh, federal, uh, you know, federal resources, uh, earmarks. And, and others that that perhaps uh, could help to to bring about the kind of development that we like to see, uh, so that you know when we have, uh, for example, you know uh, recent college graduates uh, from GCC or UOG that still cannot afford uh, uh, decent homes or to 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 purchase you know decent homes because of the great uh, you know economic divide. And a lot of social inequity that still exists, uh, especially in the area of connectivity. And so, 
how do we get all the uh, the investors uh, take a look at what has already come in and, and a, a number of them that are still wanting to come in? And what are the other types of social investments that need to take place in order to ensure that we do have uh, the right type of infrastructure that's going to benefit a, a much broader number of, of, of folks in the respective villages? To do Asi for that answer, and I'll leave it at that uh, great answer. And to do Asi, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Senator Kelly Marsh Titano. And we will now hear from Senator William Castro. Pafidi, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, congratulations, Dr. Uh, Borja Enriquez, on uh, your nomination to the Guam Land Use Commission. Uh, everyone can affirm and attest to the fact that you're a professional who has, who has committed so much of her life a personal life and, and career time uh, to improving, as uh, Dr. Kelly Marsh mentioned, uh, the quality of life for all residents of Guam. Uh, we all know you're methodical, you're open-minded, you're aspirational, and uh, with the distinctive quality, as I look at you on the TV and speak to my laptop, with the distinctive quality of being methodical uh, and looking, looking ahead at the perils, Dr. Anita, we've seen that in public hearings. You, you, you looked ahead and you saw the challenges but you're also able to come back and propose solutions to, to complex problems, uh, even understanding the context, albeit political or otherwise. So I can appreciate that of you. Um, many don't know, uh, and those who do great, uh, you have been a shining star who has won the admiration of uh, many men and women that I had the privilege to serve, whether I was at the University of Guam or at uh, even at Northern Ramos College, uh, people respected uh, your role uh, in your professional capacity at the U. Uh, even when I was the chief planner at DOE, so thank you. You definitely have your work cut out for you. Uh, as you become a member of the commission, Dr. Enriquez, I would like to encourage you as a fellow stakeholder uh, to, to look towards technology and apply your business skills to be a lot more entrepreneurial for that agency and other related agencies, not the commission per se, but in guidance to those agencies that sit atop a whole bunch of data that can generate revenue Notwithstanding, they already do that in a brick and mortar environment, but definitely building on things like the Guam Land, uh, Guam Land Use app that we had developed years ago. Uh, in addition to that, I think you can see that there's a natural alignment as maybe Senator Bisco Lee can attest to uh, through the Bureau of Statistics and Plans and looking at this land data and putting that together to, to forge ahead in a big data concept. And so with that said, um, I know you see the revenue potential and others have already stated it, but I will restate it for the record. Uh, we look forward to your balanced approach at protecting our natural resources, but also moving us forward so that we can improve the quality of life through additional revenue generating opportunities uh, for the people of Guam. God bless you in your new capacity. And um, you do have your work cut out for you. You have my vote of confidence. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Castro. Again, that. Uh uh, Dr. Enriquez, uh, we're looking forward to, as all, all these witnesses have testified, to your expertise and your work ethic on this board. I'm also counting on your integrity, which I am familiar with, because this, this particular board, the Guam Land Use Commission, not too long ago, in recent years, in fact, has acted in total defiance of the Attorney General's opinion that their actions would be in violation of the law granted variances that created an inequity in our community that the legislature continues to struggle to remedy at this point. And so we, I, you know, I, I'm just hoping not to see any behavior like that in, in defiance of what, you know, at least our, our legal authority on Guam has told us is, is a violation of law. So uh, again, I, I congratulate you and I thank you for being willing to do this. And there being no further testimony, uh, we are going to consider this hearing um, completed. And uh, all of you on who testified on her behalf, Sizu Maasi, for being here. And uh, all of you are free now to log out of this virtual hearing. Uh, we were going to we will continue with the hearing for uh, Ms. Louisa M. Wesling as a member of the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
They have to uh, create a registry and to make sure that it is accurate. Uh, they have to, um, they're a tribunal that actually has to make decisions as to whether these are the actual owners of the property or the persons who have rights in this property. And so it's a very um, uh, important job. It, it, it comes with a lot of responsibilities of research and um, integrity. Um, the commission has also a uh, property that they invest. So there's a, a lot of money at stake at this point because they're supposed they're, they act as a fiduciary for all the ancestral landowners who will not have property returned. This commission is going to take care of some investments in order that those who cannot get property will, re will receive um, hopefully some compensation uh, instead. All right, so um, Mr. Joe Ngoko was scheduled to testify, but he, he, he called and said that he was not able to make it at this point. So at this point, we will hear from um, Ms. Wesley, nominee. Thank you. Thank you. Half a day and buenas, honorable senators. Um, I thank you for this opportunity to appear before you and to testify on my behalf. And before I go on, I would like to say that um, Dr. Enriquez, um, in, in all points there, appears to be just the right person for the job, and I'm so impressed and so glad that she is willing to serve also on a very, very important um, commission, the, the, the Land Use Commission. And so, um, yes, yay for Guam. Okay, um, again, uh, and thank you for this opportunity today, senators. Um, truly, I am honored uh, and humbled that our uh, current administration, the Honorable Governor Louis Ann Guerrero and Honorable Lieutenant Governor uh, Joshua Tenorio have seen it fit that I continue service on the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission. Um, and um, I thank you all for this time today. Before I start, I would just like to share the mission of the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission. We are defined, the commission, as the quote, land claims facilitator, mandates the establishment of the land bank and compels just compensation as return of ancestral lands and or monetary compensation by facilitating the return of the excess US federal and government of Guam lands to their original owners, pursuing and advocating for the return of excess US federal and government lands to their original owners, maintaining a land bank trust for those dispossessed original landowners who will never realize the return of their ancestral lands and further pursuant to government, to Guam Public Law 2518, that ancestral land claims be expedited and claims processing be considered an urgency measure by all departments, agencies, and instrumentalities of the government of Guam, whose cooperation in facilitating meritorious claims is considered required. It has been my honor uh, during, since my appointment with the Guam Ancestral Lands to be a part of the, I guess, reconciling of, of, of history of injustices that were done after the end of World War II, which as my father, who um, was also a claimant, uh, would say, well, you know, babe, after the war, Things happened, okay? Things happened. We had no control over it, but you know what? It was, um, it's just how it was. Now, fast forward to current times. I now have the opportunity, the honorable opportunity to see justice done uh, in that um, the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission is able to return properties to those families um, 
who have been without their property since the end of the war. And in some cases, the original landowners were still here to see the day um, of the properties being returned. Um, also, we are tasked with, as, as our mission statement said, uh, to be able to um, offer just compensation to those dispossessed landowners who will never, ever return uh, or, re or realize the return of their properties. And again, it is quite awesome to be part of the process. It, it, I'm sorry, Senators, if I may, one moment, please. Very sorry. Okay, uh, you need to turn on your microphone again. Turn on your mic. I am sorry for that interruption. Uh, no problem, um, just yeah. take your time, don't worry. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and actually, I am sorry for the interruption, but I want to uh, apologize for my son. I do, I will share with you because I'm very open about this. My, my son is on the autism spectrum. Uh, for many years, he was the poster child for autism. And I know this is his way of telling me, mom, you've been locked away in the room for too long. So th uh, thank you for your understanding. Um, and, and as I was saying, I was just, um, it is truly an honor for me to be part of the, I, I believe to be the, the closure process for, for many families. And uh, for those, um, as we said, the dispossessed landowners who will never ever, uh, re uh, see the return of their properties that um, that we are tasked with um, with developing um, selling uh, making productive those crown land properties that are left um, in our trust to 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 work for the benefit of the dispossessed landowners um, in perpetuity if, if possible if possible as far as um, them receiving, um, like I said, just compensation um, for, for, the, for the losses that they sustained after the war. And so um, it has been a great learning process. We are now under um, a new administration who has new ideas um, on, on how the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission should operate. And frankly, I find it to be exciting and progressive and um, really look forward to being a continued member and part of this process. Thank you for allowing me this time to, to speak. And if you have any questions, please um, feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Westling. Thank you uh, to your son for his, it would look like enthusiastic support of your nomination. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and I want to I want, uh, thank you for your years that you have dedicated to this purpose. And I agree, it is a great honor for us to try to remedy this injustice and to do our part. So thank you for your service. And uh, I'll open it now to my colleague, Senator Regine Biscoli. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I also really want to thank the Gov and Lieutenant Gov for this awesome nomination. I've know I also know Miss Miss West Mrs. Westling uh, personally, and and I'm really glad that she's accepted um, the opportunity to come back on this board and serve again in this capacity. And I guess if there's one question that I'd I'd like to ask is. Um, given your years of experience on this board, what would you say is the primary challenge um, with the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission? I think the primary challenge that I saw in my, um, in, in, in when I first started out with the commission is that uh, it appeared at that time that although the commission was tasked to do many things, it wasn't given the resources in order to carry out uh, those tasks. And um, be it 
monetary funds, although I understand there was quite a bit in, in uh, the land bank trust, but that is a set aside for, um, as I said, for, for, for the, uh, the benefit of the dispossessed owners. And so, um, and there just appeared that in the probably early times, there wasn't as, as progressive leadership perhaps um, in, I guess, guiding things, but things have changed. Uh, as I said, with, with, uh, with this new administration, there's been new plans um, for the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission and um, definitely granting of more resources. And so I see this to be an exciting time in what I consider to be the second chapter of the, the purpose of the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission. I see in the very early days of its inception, um, the focus and concentration was getting the properties back to the families. And now that I think, um, I see that a great majority of that has been accomplished. Now it's to support and sustain the land bank trust and to develop uh, and also safeguard those properties that are entrusted to the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission. So Dan, your, your question would be, I, I think it was the limit um, of resources that was made available in previous years, but right. I see that be changing now. Yes, which is well, a very I think, good. Yeah, coupled with the additional resources or continued resources and you know your institutional knowledge, but now with this new vision and this new support that you're that you're receiving, I think you know I'm I'm certainly looking forward to many more positive things coming out of GL, GALC. Um, yes. And I just really want to encourage you to, I guess, stay close with our oversight chair and, and senators. If there's any way that we can help you in this, I agree that we, you know, we have given, uh, we've done one part of, of it, but we really need to help maintain and also protect this very important resource that we have. So again, thank you, Mrs. Absolutely. Westlake. I certainly am um, supporting your, your appointment and I, I really thank you and your family again for, for serving in this role. Thank you. Thank you too, Senator Lee. Prior to the, uh, thank you, Senator Lee. Prior to the uh, pandemic, we had planned to have an oversight of ancestral lands, but we've had to push that back. And I would have loved to have a much more fuller discussion with you and all the board members on the progress that we are making. Uh, Senator Marsh Titano, you're recognized. Sidusmasi, Madam Chair. Um, so uh, along with the others, I thank you very much for accepting this renomination. And as others have mentioned, your experience already uh, is very important to be bringing back to the table with us, um, the experiences and the lessons learned from the past and the development of how you'd like to move forward. And it's very good to hear that you're you're uh, excited about looking forward. Absolutely. That there may be, yeah, that there may be some um, new, just new situations or new ways of uh, being able to move forward. And so just to keep this short, I know our timeline is short. Um, is, is there something that you could describe that you're looking for to um, that's either been discussed with the administration or not, but just a, a type of progressive movement forward that you would like to see? Yes, um, the movements that I would like to that, uh, see that the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission uh, achieve in, you know, in the very near future. Um, number one, I've always felt that it was very important that, um, that we're able to survey those crown lands that are left in the uh, land bank trust so that we as 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 an as a commission um, for the government of Guam, know exactly what properties we have, um, and, and so that is um, in the process right now is is to survey and to and to document and inventory the properties that we have. Um, number two is to um, is to develop the properties. Um, once they are surveyed um, and, and identified, is to develop them, um, whether through um, 
virtue of the commission itself or to RFP out uh, into the market um, to, um, to, be, to do joint um, development between private and, and, and um, Guam Ancestral Lands um, uh, partnerships, I believe. Um, and really with always with the focus of keeping in mind um, that we are tasked with, again, um, the trust of, of building, um, building, oh, it's for lack of better words, uh, for really for, for building the ability to justly compensate those uh, who are dispossessed. That's wonderful to hear. And, um, you know, I so look forward to continued progress on, on, uh, on in this realm. There's so much work and there's so much uh, consideration that really needs to take place. And we're very fortunate as a community to have people such as yourself that are dedicated to these kinds of causes. So do us Masi, Madam Chair. <laughs> Thank you very much, Senator. Uh, Senator Taitikui, you're recognized. Half a day. Uh, thank you for allowing me to come back on it. I had a prior engagement, but as um, soon as I finished, I ran back and I said, okay, I get to uh, say congratulations to you uh, so much, Louisa. Um, I know you're doing a great job over there already. And um, it, it is, it's a very, uh, Guam Land Commu Commission has been, um, a very uh, touchy subject in many ways, you know, yeah. and very yeah. And the the meetings that you have to go through, um, it's it's just enormous. How long the length of time that you guys are sitting in these meetings? So I greatly appreciate all the work that anybody who comes to step up to the plate and serve uh, the public, especially with our lands, which is very dear to my heart as well as our our good uh, chairman, um, very much. The, the question, though, is um, with regards to your website, um, is that being updated, the website? I'm, I'm sorry if somebody asked that question earlier, just jumping on, but is your website updated regularly? You know, Senator Taitigui, I, I, I wish I could answer that. I really don't know very much about the website. Um, we have been a commission uh, that's really been operating on a very... Um, shoestring budget with borrowed <laughs> with yeah. borrowed staff members from 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 the Department of Land Management. And mm -hmm. so um, I, I really can't say I can find out Senator and get back with you on that as to whether or not we do have a, a website um, on, on our own. <laughs> that would be I, 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 I will definitely check on that and get back with you on that. I promise you that. I think so. I think a website would be very helpful for everybody else. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, transparency. Um, people are seem to get the wrong idea when something's out in the news that uh, they're hearing it's one thing and another says another where it's very simple. Just go on the website. You know, any information is there to provide those who are, are upset with any zone changes that were not permitted. And that's another thing too. I know it, it could be tedious and um, I, I will definitely talk to the chairman, <laughs> Madam Chair, to provide some kind of funding for the Guam Land Commission to put on this website um, on where the zonings are, what has been approved, what is going through. We, we currently have a law that requires now for a billboard to be up um, and, and uh, notification for the public with regards to that. But I think, you know, technology now, it's excellent to, to do that. And I think it would be helpful for any new coming uh, members into the board to start doing their research. I know Anita was talking about a three hour, uh, you know, meeting. So, but again, thank you again, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to uh, wish uh, Louisa uh, the very best. And again, thank you for, for serving the people of Guam. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator. Thank you again, Senators. And, and thank you again, Ms. Wessling, for your dedication to the Ancestral Lands Commission and for your willingness to continue to serve in that capacity and to make improvements and to ensure that justice is, got, is done for the people that have been disenfranchised. Uh, I really like that you, you point out that it's it's a justice. It is justice that we are seeking. So to do this, Maasi. Thank you, and Sujus Masi to you also. Thank you. Uh, we are now going to uh, uh, 
we'll end this uh, confirmation hearing. It's now 2.15 p.m. There being no further testimony. So this hearing is now adjourned. Sí, tú es más. Sí. Es adiós.